In this session, I'll talk about the last part of the MIPS FPGA Labs distribution. This section of MIPS FPGA Labs talks about data caches, the memory system, and also implementing Scratchpad RAM. In this session, I'll show a sampler of the contents of those labs. We'll look at data cache misses, part of Lab 20, and then you're welcome to move on to the other labs which describe how to experiment and modify the MIPS FPGA caches, for example, varying cache organizations and sizes, replacement policies, etc. And then the final lab, Lab 25, shows how to implement and use a Scratchpad RAM. In this exercise, we'll look at the cache hits and misses in real time by looking at those signals on the LEDs. We've provided a bit file that maps some of the signals onto those LEDs. So as shown here, the clock signal is shown on the LED 5, and then we have some signals showing whether the different stages, the instruction execute stage, the memory stage, or the write-back stage, is either executing or stalling. When that LED is zero, it means it's stalling. When it's on, it means it's executing. The final two signals on the least most significant LEDs, LEDs zero and one, show the hits and the misses, respectively. In order to exercise our data caches, we wrote a program that simply accesses a data array in sequential order. So in this exercise, we'll experiment with how the data cache line size affects performance and specifically hits and misses. If I just showed the main.c program, you can open and view that, compile it, and then we'll load it onto our MIPS FPGA and take a look at the signals. We're going to use a feature that was introduced in Lab 10, which allows our MIPS FPGA system to run with a slow clock, about a 1 hertz clock. Let's go ahead and take a look at this setup in hardware. First step is we'll load that provided bit file that maps those internal signals to the LEDs. And now we'll load that example program that accesses memory addresses in sequential order. The next step is to use a slow clock. We'll turn switch zero to the one position. And now we can view the LEDs. Recall that the hit LED indicating a cache hit is the rightmost or least significant LED. The miss LED is right next to that, so LED 1, and the clock you can see blinking on the far left there. The ones between the hit and miss and the clock are, indicate stalls or execution. So when they're zero, when they're not lit up, the pipeline is stalling, and when they are lit up, the pipeline is executing. You can see there's a miss, the pipeline stalls, three, four, we get a hit, and the pipeline begins executing again. So we can count again, we get a hit, the pipeline continues executing, we get a miss, two, three, four, hit, and pipeline begins executing again. From this we can see that the cache line has four words in it. 